the fuck? You fucking idiot. <laughs> And ahoy hoy everybody. A blustery day in paradise. That's the atomic weasel right back at you. I hope everybody's been riding safe. We've had a grand old time in Palmy. The weather's been absolutely spectacular. We've got a couple of blustery showers during today, but the temperature's still about uh, uh, 23, 24 degrees, which is absolutely delightful. And, uh, yeah, this pedestrians seem to be walking out in front of me today, so... Um, maybe I might be able to clean one up and get my uh, 50 points, because everybody knows it's, you get 50 points for every, every pedestrian you knock down. Another lovely day, all the trees are out in green. Um, I've been off the last couple of days, so my birthday. So I took a trip down to Wellington. So I went through the Wairarapa, up and over the Room and Tuckers, into Wellington for a spot of lunch, and then back up the Capiti Coast up the expressway. So the journey itself was great. Uh, the weather was fantastic. Um, I drove uh, except except when I was in Wellington. Um, so I had blue sky pretty much entirely. Uh, blue skies, fair weather, pretty much the entire time. I was uh, driving down, so I went up over the Pahia Tour track. Um, you can see snippets of that. I didn't get any more. I had a battery failure. I have to buy myself a new battery. I think the, the battery life in the GoPro is not lasting as long as it used to. So, to be fair, it's been fairly well used. Um, so the uh, yeah, so I got this view of the part here, uh, the trip over the part here to a track. Uh, but it was blue skies right through the Wairarapa, uh, up to Featherston and. Even up into Featherston, I climbed all the way up the uh, the Room of Tuckers, and uh, I was really thankful that it wasn't um, that it wasn't raining because uh, the Room of Tuckers, when it's raining, even it's just drizzly, is oh mate, it's uh, it's dangerous. You know, it's one of the more dangerous roads uh, in New Zealand. But uh, it was, like I said, it was blue skies all the way up until we got to the summit of the Room of Tuckers, and on the way down, it was a howling gale. Um, and uh, yeah, she was a, a nasty old day. Um, it was nasty and it was raining. Uh, I got into Wellington. Uh, I parked up and had a spot of lunch at the uh, at the Featherston, which is my one of my favourite spots actually. Uh, and uh, in Wellington, it's really central, right in the middle of town. Um, had lunch there before I, I journeyed back and um, yeah I mean the weather was okay um, it would, by the time I got to the bike the rain had stopped um, and uh, but it was still really blustery and really overcast and it was like that until I got to Tohoro as soon as I got to Tohoro blue sky again all the way back to town and uh, just sometimes Wellington uh, it's a lovely town it really is uh, when the when the sun shines, there's nowhere nicer. But man, oh man, when the weather's crap, oof, it's a nasty piece of place. But uh, yeah, that was a sorry. That was my my birthday ride. So 350 odd k's. It was a, it was a good day out on the bike. One thing I noticed on the KLR, as I've already mentioned before, is the uh, 
the screen it's just not big enough at the end of the day it needs to be about that much taller um, if I'm sitting about 80 kilometers an hour then it's not a problem as soon as I get to over 80 you know to 100 then it starts becoming an issue and it's really really getting buffered so there's a couple of ones I'm looking at at the moment um, there's a double bubble one um, but I don't know if it's tall enough there's an aftermarket Kawasaki one which I'm an OEM Kawasaki which I might get um, just for the sake of getting it um, cause, and that's about four inches taller than this and there's one that's been recommended by uh, another KLR rider by the name of Scratch Babble um, and that's the Maid Martek and that is a fully adjustable one it's a bit pricey but uh, I mean I'm six foot one I need the I need the higher screen uh, so we'll see how it goes I'm gonna have a have a wander today might have to throw some caution to the wind and get it so I definitely need it if I'm going to be on the open road around town it's not an issue you know just poodling around town like this not a problem so the bike itself is done uh, and coming up to 1800 kilometers um, in just on a month there's a fair amount of miles um, it's had its first service already so. um, yeah, that's first service, no issues, no problems, no dramas. Um, yeah, the bike's going really well. Um, in the mornings, the first gear clunk is a bit, a bit clunky. I think that's just. Uh... Oh, the bike itself, nice and upright. Um, it's not as heavy as I was expecting. It's uh, 200 kilos or 195 kilos. Yeah, that much. Um, really easy around town. I mean, I'm just sitting there on the. This is, you know, Featherston Street. Just going below the speed limit, of course. That's what happens when you're stuck behind uh, old ladies and cars, I suppose. But no, around town, it's really easy to get around, really easy to park up. So more than more than happy, and quite frankly, I, I like the sound of the, uh, the single cylinder when you open it up. Uh, am I going to get a slip-on exhaust for this? This that is not an option for me at the moment. That's not even on the radar. Um, the only thing I'm going to get next, obviously, is the, uh, the taller screen, and I am now. Uh, up and available and running for the uh, for the summertime out in the open road take long weekends and boy I'm gone um, the new uh, precision motorcycle racks rack is absolutely brilliant um, tied down luggage no problem held stable Matt couldn't ask for anything better Uh, you can uh, that's a, a quick overview really I mean I didn't do an install so I was just uh, showing it was so easy it's I mean you can see it online the KLR from uh, rear rack from uh, precision motorcycle racks I mean seriously those guys are uh, the product itself is really good and it's so easy to install it's as simple as taking the other one on bolting the new one on it's uh yeah easy that easy so i installed the new denali sound bomb so uh, that was done yesterday um with the help of my dad so un un unlike my dad i don't have a a shed So I was able to uh, utilize the shed and its tools and we were able to uh, mount it on one of the other the brackets in there so it's pretty much in the same position 
we were looking at all sorts of places to put it. But um, in the end, we were able to cut away a little bit of the plastic uh, that covers the, 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 um, the radiator reservoir. Um, so now it's pretty much exactly in there. So I wasn't, didn't have to worry about. Uh, didn't have to worry about um, extending the wiring or anything. So, which is fabulous. So no, this the sound bomb was loud as hell. Um, no more beep beep, more bump bump. So I'll give somebody a, a burst of it as they're going up here on Broadway. Position and uh, I don't know if you can hear it, but, but much better. Much, much better. And there, behind the traffic lights is the white older looking building called the Club Hotel. In that hotel there used to be a bar called Campbell's which I ref uh, frequented many moons ago. Now there were occasional live bands playing in there, stories of which I'll regale later. But there was a band played by the policemen. And the local police had their own band. And they were playing there one Saturday afternoon and they were getting heckled by a drunk individual and uh, it was continuous in casting uh, dispersions on the quality of their musicianship. I think that's a word. And, uh, it was going on for about an hour, and then he eventually decided he had had enough and decided he was going to go home. So he got out of the, walked out of the bar, walked towards his car, put the keys in his ignition, and as soon as he'd done that, there was a tap, tap, tap on the window. Because across the road, there used to be the police station. And the drummer, <laughs> uh, between songs, called the police station. The police officer on duty walked across the road and proceeded to arrest the heckler for drunk driving. Absolutely bloody hilarious. Couldn't have happened to a nicer bloke. Drink driving is no joke. Do not do it. But yeah, if you're going to heckle a police band, just be aware of the consequences. Hey. What are you doing? So, uh, that's all I've got for today. I hope everybody is uh, ride safe and... Oh, you're Spanish today. Yeah. Hola. I hope everybody has a uh, great weekend, a great week, ride safe. Not watch out because all the car drivers, we're all out to kill you.